Come to the feast of heaven and earth. Come to the table of plenty. God will provide for all that we need here at the table of plenty. Oh, come and sit at my table where saints and sinners are friends. I wait to welcome the lost and lonely to share the cup of my love. Come to the feast of heaven and earth. Come to the table of plenty. God will provide for all that we need here at the table of plenty. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be always with you. Good morning, brothers and sisters. Happy Monday. Today we celebrate the Feast of St. Aloysius Gonzaga, a very young Jesuit uh, religious that through his weakness, through a lot of sickness, he was able to provide for the poor and work for the Lord until he died. Let us learn from his faith that even in our weakness, we're strong. On our weakness, God does great things. And if you were not here on Sunday, on Sunday, we announced that on June the 17th, our bishop has lifted up all the restrictions. Masks are optional in our church, so feel free to wear them if you need to, if you feel safe. If you don't, it's okay. We're returning back to the old order of the Mass. We're going to give communion up to the Lamb of God, and you go back to your seats, and then we'll pray, and then we'll give you the blessing. So everything's going back to normal. The blood of Christ will be given in the near future. Bishop wants to wait until to see how this opening goes. Hope that we don't put reverse, <laughs> right? <laughs> We're hoping that God will provide and help us move forward. So as soon as Bishop sends a letter to to all the parishes that we can provide you with the blood of Christ, we will do so, okay? So I'll keep you posted on that. So let us gather in joy in thanking God as we start this week. Today also is the first day of summer. So let us begin with the warmth of our environment, the warmth of the love of God to nourish us as we come to nourish our spiritual lives from this Pascha feast table. Let us acknowledge God's love and mercy. Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison, Christ eleison, Christ eleison, Kyrie eleison. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and take us of a lasting life. Amen. Let's sing that glory to honor this great saint to him. Gloria in excelsis Deo. Et in terra pax hominibus, bone voluntatis, laudamus te, benedicimus te, adoramus te, glorificamus te, Gratias agimus tibi, propter magnam gloriam tuam, Domine Deus rex celestis, Deus pater omnipotens, Domine fili unigenite, 
Jesu Christe, Domine Deus Agnus Dei, Filius Patris, qui tolis peccata mundi, miserere nobis, qui tolis peccata mundi, suscipe de precationem nostram, Qui se des ad exteram patris, miserere nobis, quoniam tu solus sanctus, tu solus dominus, tu solus altissimus, Iesu Christe, Cum Santo Spiritu, in gloria Dei Patris, Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, giver of heavenly gifts, Queen Saint Aloysius Gonzaga, join penance to a wonderful innocence of life. Grant, through his merits and intercession, that though we fail to follow him in innocence, we may imitate him in penance. We ask you this to our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of Genesis. The Lord said to Abram, go forth from the land of your kinsfolk and from your father's house to a land that I will show you. I will make of you a great nation and I will bless you. I will make your name great so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you and curse those who curse you. All the communities of the earth shall find blessing in you. Abram went as the Lord directed him, and Lot went with him. Abram was 75 years old when he left Haran. Abram took his wife, Sarai, his brother's son, Lot, and all the possessions that they had accumulated, and the persons they had acquired in Haran, and they set out for the land of Canaan. When they came to the land of Canaan, Abram passed through the land as far as the sacred place at Sesham and by the terebinth of Moreh. The Canaanites were then in the land. The Lord appeared to Abram and said, to your descendants, I will give you this land. So Abram built an altar there to the Lord who had appeared to him. From there, he moved on to the hill country east of Bethel, pitching his tent with Bethel to the west and Ai to the east. He built an altar there to the Lord and invoked the Lord by name. Then Abram journeyed on by stages to the Negeb. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Blessed the people the Lord has chosen to be his own. Blessed the people the Lord has chosen to be his own. Blessed the nation whose God is the Lord, for the people he has chosen for his own inheritance. From heaven the Lord looks down, he sees all mankind. Blessed the people the Lord has chosen to be his own. See the eyes of the Lord are upon those who fear him, upon those who hope for his kindness, to deliver them from death and preserve them in spite of famine. Blessed the people the Lord has chosen to be his own. Our soul awaits for the Lord, who is our help and our shield. May your kindness, O Lord, be upon us, 
who have put our hope in you. Blessed the people the Lord has chosen to be his own. living and effective, able to discern reflections and thoughts of the heart. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Stop judging, that you may not be judged. For as you judge, so will you be judged, and the measure with which you measure will be measured out to you. Why do you notice the splinter in your brother's eye, but do not perceive the wooden beam in your own eye? How can you say to your brother, let me remove the wooden beam in your eye? You hypocrite, remove the wooden beam from your first, then you will be clearly to remove the splinter from your brother's eye. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. We often hear the gospel in Jesus' messages not always clear. But in this reading from Matthew, Jesus makes his message very simple. Even a child can understand. Stop judging. He even exaggerates to point out how important this message is. He says, when you notice a tiny splinter in someone's eye, first check to see your wooden beam in your own. Do you know how big, how huge a beam is? In some churches, the beams are exposed, like here, and they're huge, and they do hold the roof. That's how big they are. So, Jesus wanted to shock his listeners by doing this comparison. And it should shock us, too, today. It is easy to judge people we think are doing something wrong. Something we will never do. Those people who bring their children and put them over the wall on the south of the border of USA are condemned as bad parents by the people on this side of the border. Was Moses' mother bad? By when, when she placed his, his, his kid into this basket and sent him down the river to be saved, hoping to be saved. Do we know their name or stories? Do we search why will drive a parent travel thousands of miles? and risk so much and then abandon their small children? Do do we look for ways to to help like Ray and Ron Arnold last week by bringing 
necessities for those in need? Or do we sit back and judge from the comfort of safe homes? This is what Jesus is telling us, challenging us to do. To look at the log that is keeping us from action or change while we focus on how others are doing things wrong. Mother Teresa said, when we are judging, we are not loving. But when we are busy loving, we don't, we're not judging. Which one leads to joy? Because Jesus doesn't want us not to enjoy our lives and give us only two commandments. Love your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. That is the first and the greatest commandment. And the second one is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. I'll leave you with a short story. A man got onto a bus crowded. It was so crowded. And he went in with four children, four small children. And he sat down on the last seat, you know, the bench under the windows. And the kids started to wrestling around and bumping into other passengers and making a lot of noise, screaming and yelling, just like kids. The father just stirred out the window. He was just looking out the window. As the rest of the people got more annoyed, while they whisper each other about what an awful father he is. He doesn't care that his kids are bothering everybody else. So the man sitting next to him, he poke on his shoulder and he says, get a hold of your kids, man. They acting like animals. And he just, the father just acted like he just woke up. And he say, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, and just apologizing. He said, we are on our way home from the hospital where their mother just died. I don't know how we're going to make it without her. The people's judgment changed to compassion because they knew the story behind the actions, behind the acting of the kids being like the way they were. They reach out to the children and the men with words of encouragement and condolences. When we know better, we do better. So let us ask for the grace this week to allow Jesus to remove the logs that keep us blind and then see others with eyes of love, with the love of Jesus. Amen.
I'd like to add something that to your story view. I think the scripture as believers challenges us to show compassion, love, and caring, and love to that person, giving them the benefit of the doubt of not knowing their story. Because at the end, loving the one that you do not know has greater merit. We don't know, we don't need, we don't need to know the stories of everybody to love them. And that's where scripture takes us to a higher level. God so loved the world that he gave us his only son to have life in his name. When we did not merit that greater love. Let us stand and pray together that we may reach that high point of true compassion, love, in loving God in our brothers and sisters. For the universal church and those who minister to her members, may God's grace nourish and strengthen them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For peace among nations and peace in our hearts, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For an end to division and intolerance among all people, let us pray to the Lord. For those gathered here, may God nurture our efforts to grow in lives of holiness through the sacraments. Let us pray to the Lord. For all who have died in faith, as they trusted God on earth, may they rejoice to see his face in glory. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear us. For the special intention of Bob and Theo, Rimmel, for Julian Solot, for the soul of Julian Soto, and the soul of Janet Sutton. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. And for the intentions we hold in the quiet of our hearts, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. Loving Father, we thank you for the gift of your word words of wisdom and guidance to us that lead us to fulfillment. We ask you to listen to these prayers that we have expressed and those that we hold in the silence of our hearts. We ask you this to Christ our Lord. Please be seated that we may prepare our gifts. Come, Holy Ghost, Creator blessed, and in our hearts take up thy rest. Come with thy grace and heavenly aid to fill the hearts which thou hast made. To fill the hearts which thou hast made. O Comforter, to thee we cry, Thou heavenly gift of God most high, Thou font of life and fire of love, and sweet and mighty from above, and sweet and mighty from above. 
Praise be to Thee, Father and Son, and Holy Spirit with them one. And may the Son on us bestow the gifts that from the Spirit flow, the gifts that from the Spirit flow. Come, Holy Ghost, Creator blessed, and in our hearts take up thy rest. Come with thy grace and heavenly aid to fill the hearts which thou hast made to fill the hearts which thou hast made. Receive, O Lord, this sacrifice, and set the word to you, Almighty Father. You provide me, Lord, from your sins, and we celebrate these sacred mysteries with dignity your heart. For me, brothers and sisters, it is a sacrifice be acceptable to God, our loving Father. For the praise and glory of God's name, for the good and the good of all the church, amen. Grant us, O Lord, by the example of St. Aloysius, that we may take our place at a heavenly banquet, clothed always in our wedding garments, so that participating in this mystery, we may possess the riches of your grace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And may the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly really right and just that we should give you thanks always and everywhere. Most heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. By your word, you created the world and you govern all things in harmony. You gave us the same word made flesh as mediator. He has spoken your words to us and called us to follow him. He's the way that leads us to you, the truth that set us free, and the life that fills us with gladness. Through your son, you gather men and women who you made to the glory of your name into one family, redeemed by the blood of the cross and signed with the seal of the Holy Spirit. Therefore, now and for ages and ending, with all the angels, we proclaim your glory as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Sanctus, Sanctus, Sanctus Dominus Deus Sabaoth, Plenis Sun Celi Etera, Gloria Tua, Hosanna in excessis, benedictus, qui venit in nomine domini. Hosanna in excessis. You are indeed holy, and to be glorified, of God who loves the human race, and who always walks with us in the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son, present in our midst, who were gathered by his love, and when, as one for his disciples, and so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread on this Paschal feast table. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask you to send your Holy Spirit upon this gifts to make him holy, to so may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son. At the night, that he was going to give his life to set us free. As he was with his disciples, he took bread, gave you thanks and praise, broke it, and gave it to them, and said, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body that will be given up for you.
When the supper had ended, he took the cup. Again, he gave you thanks and praise. Took the cup and gave it to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is a challenge of my blood, the blood of the new eternal covenant. It will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Brothers and sisters, the mystery of our faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. You have set us free. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led to his passion and dead on the cross to the glory of resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until you come again, and we offer you this bread of life and this challenge of eternal blessing. Father in heaven, receive our offering from this is the gift of your church to you, that we may show through this sacrifice the Paschal mystery that your Son has handed over to us. Father in heaven, we pray for your church. Your church spread through all the world. We go to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope, Robert our Bishop, our priests, deacons, and your holy people out here. Father in heaven, we pray for our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of Christ and in all the dead whose faith you have only known. Admit them to rejoice into the light of your face, and in the resurrection, give them the fullness of life. And grant us, when our earthly pilgrimage has been completed, to be with you in your heavenly home, together with Mary, the Mother of God, the Apostles, the Saints, St. Francis of Assisi, and St. Clair, and all of those who have pleased you throughout the ages, that we shall praise you and exalt you to Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. 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 Faithful to our Lord's command, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil and grant us peace in a day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin and protect us from all anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior. Jesus Christ, for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. May the peace of the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let us give each other the sign of peace. mundi. <laughs> Miserere nobis, agnus Dei, qui tolis peccata mundi, miserere nobis, agnus Dei, qui tolis peccata mundi, Dona nobis pace. Behold the name of God who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are we for being called to the supper of the Lamb.
Before we receive the bread of life, I'd like you to join me in praying the spiritual prayer for our brothers and sisters who are following us live streaming, and then we'll receive together. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in a most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul, since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally. Come at least especially into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never allow me to be separated from you. Amen. Has not seen, he has not heard what God has ready for those who love him. Spirit of love, come give us the mind of Jesus. Teach us the wisdom of God. When pain and sorrow weigh us down, be near to us, O Lord. Forgive the weakness of our faith and bear us up within your peaceful word. I has not seen, he has not heard what God has ready for those who love him. Spirit of love, come give us the mind of Jesus. Teach us the wisdom of God. Let us pray. Renew and nourish by the sacred body and precious blood of your Son. We ask of your mercy, O Lord, that what we celebrate with constant devotion may be our search, pledge of redemption as community. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. I wish you a very happy and joyful weekend as we move forward. And thank you for all your support throughout this pandemic in adapting to the measures that we were going through. So thank you so much for being such a great community and very supported. May God bless your hearts always. And let us pray that we may continue this opening with a peaceful, unfolding way that we may continue praising the Lord on everything we do. All right? God bless you always. And may the Lord be with you. Amen. May God bless you and protect you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in peace to proclaim the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Have a wonderful day. Thank you. Oh, bless the Lord. 
Lord, the God of our salvation, rock of strength and a refuge sure. Oh, bless the Lord, the God of every nation, over all the earth. Oh, bless the Lord, highest heavens above, bless the Lord, glorify his name. Sun in the day, moon and stars in the night, worship and praise. Oh, bless the Lord, the God of our salvation, rock of strength and a refuge sure. Oh, bless the Lord, the God of every nation over all the earth.